let me tell you something. Deuce Vaughn is the one running back you don't want to meet in the hole. And it sounds crazy that I'm saying that because he's 5'5". But listen to me. I'm not talking about he's going to run you over. If you meet Deuce Vaughn in the hole, you're going to lose three things. You're going to lose your ACL. You're going to lose your Achilles. And you're going to lose your job. Hey. Okay. All right. That's a wrap. NFL preseason game number one, the Dallas Cowboys lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars 28-23. First and foremost, preseason games do not count. The outcome does not count. It's all about good quality reps and see who's going to make the team and who's going to contribute to your team for the year. So we lost by five points. I really don't care. I missed the beginning of the first quarter because... Jay-Z had an exhibit in the Brooklyn Museum. My wife knows that Jay-Z is my favorite artist. So, she took me to New York. We checked out the exhibit, got some food, had a great time. On the way home, the game started. I wasn't tripping. It's preseason. I was getting updates on my phone, but I wasn't tripping. So, in the beginning of the game, from what I've heard, Jake Ferguson might be a pro bowler this year. There will not be any setback losing Dalton Schultz. And that's a good thing. I knew Jake Fergie was going to be good. He showed out last year when Schultz was hurt. Which takes me back to why I was so confused in taking a tight end so early in the draft. Especially an injury prone tight end. And Shoemaker. Now Shoemaker played. I think he had a couple catches. I'm looking at the stats right now. Shoemaker had one catch for 8 yards. Alright. Hopefully he blocked well. I didn't see too much of him. But... Jake Fergie did his thing. And he's looking at the stats. Cooper Rush, 10 to 12, 83 yards. That's what I like to see. That's good efficiency. That's a good rating for our QB too. He's definitely going to be our quarterback too. Will Greer was 22 of 31 for a buck 99. Two touchdowns in the pick. Those are good stats too. Now, I seen a couple of throws late in the fourth quarter. I was like, all right, yeah, Will Greer, I don't know if it's you or offensive line. But hey, he's going to be at best our QB3. Unless we get some injuries and hopefully we don't. And so the way I want to begin this video is I am not believing in any hype from training camp. Unless I see it with my own two eyes and real game reps. Because last year you guys had me thinking Dennis Houston was the next Victor Cruz. The next Miles Austin. The noise that I kept hearing from training camp was that Dennis Houston is the next guy. And he wasn't. But, I ain't gonna lie, Dennis Houston, he looked good today. He, he had a couple catches, let me see. He had three catches for 33 yards, had three targets, so hey, three for three. But like I said last year, y'all had me thinking that he was coming out, going for 1,000 yards, and he didn't. I, don't, I think after the week two, week three, we didn't see him anymore. Therefore, the hype that's happening around this year is Eric Scott Jr. and Jalen Brooks. Now, hey, I was watching the game. They didn't pop out at the screen. Now, it was only one game. What is it? Three or four preseason games? They got more chances to pop out on the screen. But as of right now, they on that Dennis Houston category. Y'all y'all saying they, they doing real good, but you got to do it during the games, and they didn't do it yet. So, I'm not believing in any hype. I'm telling you, I need to see it in real game reps because we don't need practice players. Well, the last time we won was, what, 95, 96? No, we need in-game players. So they, I heard they've been balling out in training camp. I need to see it in the game. The next thing I want to talk about, because this is not going to be a long video, our offensive line. The backups, they trash. Like, I pray to God that our starters stay healthy. Because when I click that game on at the end of the first quarter and the rest second, third, and fourth quarter, the, the opposing defensive line was in the backfield every play one time deuce von got the ball as soon as he got the ball it was the defender in his face now we'll get to deuce von a little later but like yo it's all offensive line the backups Whew. like yo we need our starters to stay healthy and we need to play zach martin whatever he wants pay the man please because that was a disgrace today our next segment jalen tolbert last year jalen tolbert was very underwhelming Actually, he wasn't even active for, I think, 100% of our games. But today, he showed that he worked on his game in the offseason. And he's, has, he's improved. 
like he had this one catch that was nice they called it an OPI come on now if y'all calling that an OPI offensive pass interference when we pay these receivers this year and they push off more Trayvon Diggs and Stephon Gilmore refs you better call it but yeah Jalen Tolbert he had a nice game from what I saw let me see his stats he had oh he only had two catches for 29 yards but he had a touchdown so that's his first touchdown whether it's preseason real game scrimmage practice and that was his first touchdown so it was good to see that hopefully he can carry that on to the real season as about now from my eyes and what i've seen he's gonna be our wide receiver four obviously you got cd you got cooks you got michael gallup and i see tolbert being our number four and while we're on the wide receiver discussion let's move on to Kevontae turpin now if we don't use Kevontae turpin how west virginia used tavon austin in college there's really no reason for him to be on the squad anymore because the last time Turpin really did something was preseason game last year and when he made the roster especially in the playoff game versus the 49ers he had chances to break it but he made the wrong cut so if you're not repeating those touchdowns on special teams and they're not using you like you should be used like a Tavon Austin we really don't need them that's just my opinion comment below yours next segment the running back committee obviously Tony Pollard he's our RB1 he didn't play today he was on ice they had him chilling looking at it I think Malik Davis got the start and they said like I said I didn't see the beginning of the first quarter they say he had a rough day when I turned during the game Rico Dow was balling he had some juice he had some breakaway speed he runs tough hard I'm thinking that Rico is our RB2 even if we bring Zeke back I think I still want Rico our number two. Even though he fumbled today and that was 100% his fault, I like the burst on that play, the speed, the hit the outside. So I'm a real fan of Rico's and I think he should be our RB2 unless, yes, it's time. Deuce Vaughn takes that spot. Let me tell you something. Deuce Vaughn is the one running back you don't want to meet in the hole. And it sounds crazy that I'm saying that because he's 5'5", but listen to me, I'm not talking about he's gonna run you over. If you meet Deuce Vaughn in the hole, you're going to lose three things. You're going to lose your ACL. You're going to lose your Achilles. And you're going to lose your job. Deuce Vaughn? Psh, yo. He's crazy. He had, what, eight carries for 50 yards and a touchdown. And he had three catches for six more yards. Deuce Vaughn is making his team. Whether you like it or not. Now, hopefully we can use him how he should be used because the kid can play. He's not just here because who his dad is and his dad works for the Cowboys. He can play. He just needs the opportunity and the right offensive scheme. So I'm praying that the Cowboys can do that. If you're a Cowboy fan, comment below your thoughts on this preseason game. Like I said, outcome doesn't count. But we just want to see in-game reps and we saw it. Some guys need to step up. Other guys did step up and need to be on ice. And hopefully we can see Dak and CD at least the last preseason game because, hey, the Super Bowl champs, they're playing their starters. So why aren't we? But until next time, 